Oxford from the inside. The good, the bad, but always the truth. Hi, I'm Hannah. Welcome to Oxford from the inside, where we talk about the good, the bad, but always the truth about studying at Oxford. Today we're here with Sophie. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Sophie. Um, I've just finished my Master's in Engineering Science at Oxford um, in Worcester College. And I'm actually staying in Oxford to do um, a PhD in communications engineering. Amazing. Thank you. And welcome to the podcast. Um, today, we're going to be talking about engineering science, or as it's also known, engineering um, personal statements. And Sophie's going to be talking a bit about hers and this type of thing she did. Um, so without further ado, let's get on to the first question which is, what advice would you give to prospective students writing personal statements for engineering? So honestly, my first and biggest piece of advice would be to worry less about your personal statement than you probably are at the moment. Um, there would honestly have to be something really wrong with your personal statement for it to stop you from getting an interview if you were going to get one based on your grades and stuff. Um, and in the same way, you'd need something really special in your statement for it to single-handedly get you an interview, um, despite not having the grades. So basically I'm saying it's not the most important part of the application. Having said all that, obviously you want to write the best personal statement you can. And that's what this interview is about. So, <laughs> um, And the other thing I would say is in the nicest way possible, the tutors reading your personal statement don't really care about your hobbies. So you might find that your teachers encourage you to have um, a section in your personal statement about extracurricular stuff. And I think maybe some universities want some of that. Um, to be honest, I'm not sure. For Oxford though, if it's not directly relevant um, to the degree you're applying for, um, it's not going to add any quality to your personal statement. And what I'm talking about here is things like sports, DV, um, you know, all these things are great things to do, but they won't help you get into Oxford for engineering. Um, I don't want to make you think that um, writing this stuff is going to stop you from getting in. It won't at all. Um, in fact, I wrote about um, some sports that I do in my personal statement. Um, it's not really relevant and I think it just takes up space. Um, but it's it's obviously not something that's going to rule you out. Um, and I would my advice would be if you really want an extracurricular paragraph, I would limit it to maximum 10 percent of the personal statement, which is probably a bit less than um, what people would do applying to other universities. That's really good advice. Um, yeah, I feel like across the subjects, Oxford isn't really that interested in your extracurricular. Um, I mean, I know in mine, I just wrote one or two sentences um, to help with my other uni applications um, and then sort of linked it to transferable skills. Um, but like Sophie said, sort of 10 percent and you can choose, you know, to write a little bit or to leave it out completely. Um, and it's entirely up to you and your choice. Um, but Sophie did write a little bit um, and the advice she gave was really, really good. So thank you for that. Um, let's move on to the next question, which is engineering it's not really a specific subject that students take before starting a degree. So unlike maths, physics, chemistry, um, there's no A-level for engineering, even though some of the skills relate to it. Um, so I'm just wondering how you found your interest and developed that um, around engineering. So to be honest, I don't really have much of a story behind it. Um, I basically just knew that I liked maths and physics at school. Um, my A-levels actually were maths, further maths, physics and chemistry. Um, so kind of boring, the most engineering A-levels you could get. <laughs> um, and I was actually deciding between maths and engineering for a while. Um, and I'm really glad I picked engineering, actually. Um, the, the route I've gone down um, with what I specialised in in engineering, I pretty much just do a lot of maths anyway. Uh, but it's not the kind of maths you would do in a maths degree, which is um, sort of a, a lot more abstract from what I've seen from my friends that do maths. Um, so, yeah, I think if you really enjoy maths and further maths at A level, um, you will like the maths that you do in an engineering degree. It's quite similar, but obviously just <clears throat> extends it to be a bit harder. Um, 
I also did do something actually. I did um something called Head Start, um, which was sort of a week long summer school type thing. Um, and the aim of it was to try and show you what it would be like studying undergrad engineering. Um, and I think they offer it at lots of different universities. Um, and if you're interested in something like that, I would say go for it. It can be good to help you decide if the degree you're doing it in is right for you. But at the same time, if you're watching this video, you might already be pretty sure, which is fine too. That's really good advice. And um, I think Head Start is now called Insight into University. Um, oh. And we'll put the link in the description to this um, this video here. Um, so that'll be on Instagram and YouTube um, in the description. And um, I think it offers fully funded places to people who need it. Um, so to people who, um, you know, might struggle financially. Um, but other than that, it's about £85 for an entire week, including accommodation. Um, so when you, you sort of break it down that way, it's not hugely expensive, but there is support available if you do struggle with that, um, which is great. And um, that's what access should be about, you know, giving people access to that sort of thing without the financial worry. Um, so just a sort of, you know, a little bit of info on that. Um, but thank you, Sophie, for your experiences in that. Um, that's really interesting and really useful to hear. Um, so moving on to the third question, is there any super curricular resources? So this might be reading around your subject, any sort of of the schemes you did, um, just sort of extra things to do with your subject. Um, so any super curricular resources that you found useful or interesting when looking into engineering? So in year 13, um, I was specifically looking for a book to find um, because I wanted to write about one in my personal statement. And I found one called Professor Povey's Perplexing Problems, um, which is just a collection of maths and physics related puzzles. Um, and the maths and physics level is pre-university. So it is really aimed at people um, looking to apply for STEM courses at university. And I really liked it actually. The puzzles are really interesting. The level of knowledge needed, I don't think extends past A-level stuff, but you do have to think about things in sort of really clever ways. And in fact, I think it um, um, it could be quite a good interview prep as well if you were to get to that stage. Um, so yeah, I would really recommend it if you're on the lookout for something like that. Um, and the other thing that I think was really good about it was that I think if you find that you really enjoy the problems, then that's a very good sign that you're applying for the right thing. Um, so I found when I was doing it that I actually, you know, quite enjoyed picking the book up and um, picking a problem. They're not too long. They're quite short problems and there's loads of them. So I would quite enjoy picking the book up, picking a random one and just sort of thinking about it for a bit. It was actually quite interesting. Um, so, yeah, I think it's a good way of testing um, whether an engineering degree is something that you're going to sort of enjoy um obviously that's just one book there's loads of others you could write about in a similar way uh, my advice would just be to look for literally anything that's relevant um that you genuinely find interesting um to give it a read and talk about it in your statement yeah again really really good advice and what you said about sort of being genuinely interested um i feel like uh, especially at Oxford, but also for any other uni, if you're going to do four years in a subject, you've got to, you know, enjoy it, or you've got to have that sort of inspiration and that passion for it. And um, there's just, there's no point doing something that you don't enjoy. So that what you said there was um, really, really good advice, Sophie. Thank you for that. Um, so for the, the next question, um, it's to do with differences between courses, really. So at some other unis, there are specific courses in different types of engineering such as um, electrical engineering and aerospace engineering there's a few other different types but just two examples there um, whereas at Oxford the engineering course is initially quite general I think um, and then students don't really specialize until later years or they'll they'll drop modules um, and they don't want to do um, partway through the degree um, so did this sort of um general course at Oxford did it prove a challenge to you when you were writing your statement in terms of like choosing aspects to focus on 
or did you feel that it enabled you to show a more unique perspective of yourself and your passions? So it is true that it's a bit confusing when you first start writing your statement and you go, hang on, I need to tell Bath that I really want to do electrical engineering, but then I need to tell Oxford that I like all types of engineering. <laughs> um, but actually, I think there is nothing wrong with talking about a particular branch of engineering in your Oxford um, personal statement. So when I was applying, um, I went for mostly electrical courses at other universities. And what I did was to introduce my personal statement by saying, I want to study engineering. Um, but then later on, I had paragraphs that specifically referenced my interest in electrical stuff. Um, so I would say for the universities you're applying to that aren't Oxford, it's okay in your opening to just say you want to study engineering. Um, and then in terms of your Oxford personal statement, it's okay to have a paragraph on, for example, electrical engineering or chemical engineering. Um, Oxford tutors know how the system works, then it's not, you know, they know that you can't apply to five general engineering courses. Um, so they're definitely going to understand and be used to statements that focus on one type of engineering. So I really wouldn't worry um, if you think your, your personal statement is too, for example, chemical engineering heavy, that's completely fine. An, an Oxford tutor is going to be so used to that. They know how the system works. That's Really, I keep saying this, but you know, you're full of good advice, Sophie, um, and that's really useful because I think writing one personal statement for five often very different courses can be really hard. Um, and you know, the sort of the way you've navigated it seems really, really good. Um, can you remember which unis you applied to and if they were sort of general or specific? Don't worry if you can't, but just if you can. So, Oxford, I applied to. Um, the other one that was general was Durham, I think. Um, and then I also applied to Warwick, Bath and Bristol, which were more specific. And um, to those ones, I either applied to electrical engineering or I think a couple of them offered integrated electrical and mechanical engineering, which is what I applied for for those ones. That's... So I had a mix of um, general engineering and um, specified engineering stuff. That's quite a good mix, that. Um, but honestly, you can, I'm sure Sophie will agree, you can go for whatever mix you want, yeah. and it's just down to your passions, I guess, um, as well. Um, yeah, thank you for that. Um, moving on to the next question is, um, it is, what advice would you give to someone who is applying for a general engineering degree at Oxford, um, but also, oh, sorry, we've already answered this one. <laughs> um, ignore me no, there. Um, no, I've got I've got more to say, it's okay. You've got more to say? Okay, <laughs> yeah. in that case, any more advice? <laughs> any yeah. more advice for people applying to a specific and a general one? <laughs> so in terms of how that would affect your personal statement, I think we have covered that. So in summary, I would say um, have a paragraph or two um, emphasising your interest in the branch of engineering that you're applying to at the non-Oxford universities. Um and have the rest of your statement be about more general skills. So like any university you apply for will appreciate hearing that you're good at maths, just as an example, like that's that can apply to any kind of engineering. Um, but more generally on the topic of general versus specialized courses, um, I would have to say that I personally really appreciated the fact that Oxford is a general course. I don't think during your a levels that everyone is in a position to know exactly what kind of engineering they want to do because it's not something we study at school um so me for example um the 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 combined electrical and mechanical courses that i applied for i don't think i would have liked them as much as what i do now because i actually found that um I didn't do any mechanical engineering beyond second year because I didn't like it that much. Um, I picked the much more um, coding and uh, maths based stuff. Um, so I definitely wouldn't have chosen what I'm specializing in now, especially like even for my PhD, I wouldn't have necessarily chosen something that would have allowed me to do this PhD at the age of 17. So if you're considering um, a general course versus a specialized course, I would bear that in mind that you're not necessarily going to like exactly all the same options that you think now will be your favorite ones. 
that's interesting yeah because I guess you might change and your interests might change as well as you go through the course and you learn more things or you yeah, maybe come exactly, across yeah. other things and yeah. it's just a case of everything being quite new so it's sort of you, you can guess what kind of thing you think you'll like more but until you've started you haven't actually done engineer, any engineering yet so it's yeah, it's difficult to know yeah that's um yeah that's really useful to know and um interesting to hear how you sort of approached it as well um so thank you uh last question now and that is um what kind of things did you have in your personal statements some of this we sort of already covered but um yeah just a general breakdown of how you sort of structured it and what content was in it would be great thank you so to be honest my personal statement was quite generic which is absolutely fine um so I started off just expressing my interest um, in the opening paragraph, basically just saying, I want to study engineering. Um, you know, I really like it for these reasons, or I think I'll really like it for these reasons. Um, I then talked a bit about the book I mentioned before, Professor Povey's Perplexing Problems. Um, and I just talked about how um, I enjoyed the problems in there. Um, and that's why I thought I would enjoy the course and I think you know that would make me a good engineer the fact that I really enjoyed um putting my mind to these problems that were sort of um more like puzzles yeah um I also talked a bit about the head start course that I mentioned before and some work experience that I did in a chemical engineering plant um and then at the end I did have a short paragraph um about extracurricular stuff it wasn't long like three lines I think um which for me my extracurricular stuff was sport um and as I said before I don't think that added anything to the quality of the personal statement so if we're talking specifically about applying to Oxford if I was writing it again um I would take that bit out but at the same time it definitely didn't hinder my application um it was just a bit at the end that I think the tutors read and were like okay <laughs> I don't, don't really care but it's fine yeah that's great um I have a, a slightly bonus question are all engineering books or maths and physics books do they all have really hard really hard to say names <laughs> <laughs> or is it is it just yeah, that one? <laughs> yeah this one was a fun one to say to say like four times in a podcast <laughs> <laughs> oh I don't think I could do it so you've done a great job of that <laughs> Oh, well, um, I'm afraid that's actually all we've got time for um, today, but we've learned some really interesting stuff um, and it's been great to hear because um, I'm a, a humanities student. So it's been really interesting on my part, actually, to hear how a STEM personal statement is sort of structured and how it's formed. So um, thank you for that, Sophie. Um, and thanks for sharing your experiences um, with us here today at Oxford from the inside. Um, also thank you to our followers and our listeners on um youtube on spotify on anchor um, and all the platforms that it's on um through there um you can follow us on instagram at oxford from the inside to keep up with our content we do um some posts as well as episodes so we'll do like um defining oxford jargon um and we've just done some like meet the new team posts as well um so yeah you can keep up to date with all of those um, I hope you all stay safe and well, and in the meantime, or until next time, goodbye.